With this movie, we'll be able to finish off our little short six-second animation here as we put some finishing touches on some of the motion. Between the movies, I've added a glow behind the moon. I've added some different varying thickness to the line of our airplane just to, to beef that up a little bit. Something we may want to do is that we can play this animation right now and see it in action. The stars are going to be a little bit harsh, I think, when we render that. So I'll do a quick render just as a proof of concept. You can see the glow behind the moon now. We'll use the same trick on the stars that I did with the glow on the moon and make them just a little less significant as compared to the airplane. I'll come down to the star layer, open the layer options, and under blur radius, I'm simply going to say, eh, let's blur this thing one pixel. Now that's not a lot, but it's enough to go ahead and add some nice softness to that that allows the buildings to come forward, the airplane to be nearer to us, and probably something we should employ here with the moon as well and possibly even the mountains just so we have an idea of foreground and background. I think I'll leave the hills the way they are. I'll change the moon right now. So it's just kind of back and forth and style treatment where you go ahead and gauge and disengage many of the options that you get on these layer palettes. Under the moon options, I'll come down and blur that one pixel as well. The next step is for the airplane. I want the whole thing to vibrate a little bit. So we'll open up the options there, go directly to our vector layer. And in this case, I'm going to say noisy outline, noisy fills. But the offset I'm going to make much smaller. I want the airplane to be very, very legible and easy to view and see. So I'll make this much smaller, something more like two pixels. And we'll animate that. So we get an idea here, just a nice little slight vibration. Let me try and see what three looks like. Three may be more to our needs on that. Let me back out of our work area a little bit here. And we'll play that. I'll stop right here. Let's do a render. We can see now we've got our airplane moving across the sky and the softness of the moon and stars is nice. Let me go ahead and back one of those lines out of the stars here. Let me do that here, open up stars, and instead of having two for the extra lines, we'll just do one and choose OK. You know, on second thought, we'll leave that out. Let me go ahead and reduce the offsets for that just a little bit down to something like 10. So they're vibrating, but not quite so aggressively. And the last thing that I'll want to do in terms of motion that I haven't done yet is scale the layer of the buildings here. And that is just so we get a nice dynamic as the plane arcs through the sky, the buildings will get a little bit closer. At about the 72 or 3 second mark, let's actually make it 4. Well, let's see how it looks at 3 and we'll drag the keyframe around if we need to. I'll come down to the layer scale option. I'm going to add a keyframe there so that it holds and doesn't tween from the beginning of the animation to this point in time. But now at the end of the animation, I'm going to want to get go ahead and scale the building's layer itself, or the entire city. And let me come down and put a keyframe on that. I did that to the buildings instead of the, uh, the layer that contains them. So back at three seconds. Say so add keyframe. I've got one for position and for the scaling as well. Keyboard shortcut two for the scaling of that layer. And I don't want that to move a lot, just a little. So the buildings are subtly getting larger as the animation progresses. Then for the buildings themselves, let me disclose this. We'll go to the windows, open the options here, vector layer, noisy fills, there's no outlines on the windows. I want that animated, but pretty subtle like the airplane. Three in this case, so they're moving just a little bit. Choose OK. For the buildings themselves, we'll pull off a similar little tactic, but this time we'll have both the outlines and the fills animated bring that down to a little bit more like four, so they're a little more active than the windows are. 
and we'll leave the scales where it is right now. Choose OK, do a quick render at this point. Things are balancing out, it looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and get this set up for a render and see how it looks. Since this doesn't have as many high-tech options, let me cancel this for a second and do what all good animators do before you start a render, and that is to save the file. We'll go ahead and go to Export Animation, Entire Animation. I'll stick with QuickTime now, and since we don't have some of the complexity of some of those other types of work that we're doing with the frog, this should render just fine. I'll go ahead and choose Save. I'll leave it with the Sorensen codec. And here we go. And there we go. Let's go ahead and play this and take a look at it. We get a nice little vibration, a little bit of that hand-drawn look across a painted background. Pretty neat and tidy stuff. So that's how easy it is to go ahead and set up some faux motion with Anime Studio Pro. Even though we had a single star that was replicated with the particle emitter, they all looked different because they were vibrating differently thanks to those changes we put in the star layer itself. So these are some of the cool ways that you can use many of the tools and you can keep exploring, especially with the brushes, to get that real natural media look if that's something that works well for your assignment.